So today we're going to follow the itinerary of the commandos who cleared the gap between Sword and Juno. And the commandos landed on the flanks of the Commonwealth beaches. The first special service brigade under Lord Lovett landed on the eastern flank of Sword Beach. They were to take Wiesteram and then go to uh, Pegasus Bridge to relieve the airborne there. 47 Royal Marine Commando landed on the western flank of Gold Beach and they were to take Port Mbessa, which is halfway between Gold and Omaha. Juno and Gold Beach were practically contiguous, but there was a gap between Sword and Juno. This was due to some small cliffs, not 100 foot high cliffs like at Omaha, but cliffs high enough to make it difficult for vehicles to land. And so the commandos were to clear out this gap 41 Royal Marine Commando landed on the western end of Sword Beach. They were to go towards Luxio Mer. And 48 Royal Marine Commando landed on the eastern flank of Juno Beach. And they were to go and meet the 41 RMC. 41 RMC and 48 RMC were to join in this hamlet of Petit Enfer, between Luc sur Mer and Langrun. Now you've heard this before, but of course the plans didn't go to plan. The commandos on Sword Beach landed at 8.20, 50 minutes after the first landings. Due to the current that affected all the beaches, they were 300 yards to the left of the objective. Casualties were heavy from Strong Point Cod, which was still active. Once they had moved inland past the beach, they grouped on the road to Hermanville. From there, they formed two groups. Once they got off the beach, Lieutenant Colonel T.M. Gray assembled them near here, just by the road to Hermanville. Now the plan was to form two groups, one to attack Lyon sur Mer Chateau and the other to attack the strong point trout by the coast. The attack on the strong point was to be led by Gray and the chateau attack was to be led by second in command. He now found that his second in command and three other officers had been killed on the beach. But the attack would carry on as to plan. He moved his group into town and set up his CP by the church. The town had been practically abandoned, except around the strong point. Their advance was stopped by machine guns and mortar fire. Germans were firing out the houses. Around 11 a.m., three Avrays with 20 kilogram mortars advanced in support. Fire was coming out of the houses on each side of the road. The lead tanker captain McLennan had its mortar hit, which caught on fire. Then two more hits from a 50mm anti-tank gun in the strong point. The rear tank of Lieutenant Tennant's tank was knocked out. Then Captain Lowe's tank. The group attacking the chateau was stopped due to heavy fire from the chateau and from trout. The commandos needed heavier weapons and none were arriving. They'd lost contact with the guns at their rear. Just afternoon they were attacked on their left flank. The troops defending these beaches were from the 716th Division, commanded by General Richter. Most of them surrendered or overrun by the Allied troops, except those in bunkers. One exception was the gun battery of Lieutenant Schaff. He was on Perrier Ridge near Plumetau and he'd been firing onto the beach directed by observers on the beach until they were overrun. Then they were just firing using predetermined coordinates. Then Colonel Klug, who was at Hillman, he ordered them to move and attack the troops at lyon sur mer It was his troops and the guns who attacked the commandos on their left flank. Now they had the advantage of a surprise 
advanced to the outskirts of the town, but then they came under heavy concentrated fire from the commandos, plus fire from the ships, which drove them back. And Lieutenant Schaff managed to get his guns back to Perrier Ridge intact. This attack on Gray's flank showed how vulnerable this spur was. Gray put the attack off to the next day and held his men around the church. In the evening, Lieutenant Colonel Gray pulled his men back to the Chemin du Hamel, just on the outskirts of Hermanville. This Havre was presented by General Sir Ian Havris. He was a Lieutenant Colonel on D-Day with the second Royal Ulster Rifles. It was three tanks like this that attacked Trout on D-Day. They have a 20 kilogram mortar which can bust open concrete bunkers. On the eastern end of Juno Beach at Saint Aubin, the 48 Royal Marine Commando landed against heavy and accurate fire from Saint Aubin. Three of their six LCIs got caught in obstacles. The craft with Lieutenant Colonel Moulton, HQ, escaped the obstacle but the others were held in the fire from the beach. Many of the men tried swimming, but drowned. The men of Z Troop were picked up by an LCT and ended up back in England. The North Shore Regiment and secured the beach, so casualties for the commandos were severe. When Moulton counted the men at the rendezvous, he had only 60% of them. They were taken shelter by the sea wall and small cliffs Marine Jack Matheson recounts, The tide was well in now, and the beach was narrow. There were wounded men who had crawled up, pushed by the tide, lying on the beach. A tank came along the wall, trying to get to shelter. The driver couldn't see the wounded men, and started running over them. Major Dan Flunder threw a grenade under the track to blow it off and stop the tank. At that time there was some open land the other side of the road. That's where Colonel Milton assembled his men and he found he only had 60% of them. Now the objective was to take Longroon and then meet up with the 41 RMC at Petit Enfer at Luxeau-Mer. But Milton led his men along the road from saint Aubin, and at this roundabout he sent two troops down this way to attack the strong point from the side of the sea. He took the others towards the church. He left a troop by the church to guard the rear and sent two troops to attack WN 26. And the Manoir de Templier, or the Templar's Mansion, became Moulton's headquarters during the attack. Major Daniel Flunder was the one who threw a grenade into the track of the tank. Commandos were too lightly armed to overcome the concrete fortifications of Strong Point. Two Centaur tanks from the Royal Marine Armoured Support came forward, but they were stopped by mines while firing at the concrete wall, which barbed away. By the evening, it was evident that the attack had stalled. Intelligence warned them of impending attack from the 21st. They were instructed to set up a defensive cordon on the flank of Juno Beach. WN26 was in the position of what is now the car park. There were houses along here between the road and the sea and they were turned into real block houses. That means the house looked normal from the exterior except the windows were concreted in and the inside of the house was reinforced with concrete. The windows just had small slits to fire from. And in the middle of the junctions each end 
more or less where that manhole cover is, there was a tow brook. So a man would just have his head above ground level there, firing down towards where the commanders were coming from. And then there was a concrete wall where the traffic lights are up there. There was another tow brook in the middle of that junction. And along by the sea, there were concrete emplacements, anti-tank guns, mortars, machine guns. They spent the night with no action, but looking both ways to Strong Point and inland, watching for the Panzers. 41 Royal Marine Commando were in more danger of being attacked by the Panzers because their objective was to go to the coast and then turn right to attack Sword Beach. It was across this open country that the 21st Panzers launched their attack towards the coast. And by chance, they were forced to turn back. 250 C-47s came across the coast, towing 250 gliders, plus C-47s bringing bundles to drop near Pegasus Bridge to support the airborne. So Colonel Rock, he thought, if they land behind me, I'm going to get trapped. And so he turned around and went back to Khan. On the 7th, they took up the task of attacking WN26 again. Two Wolverines, watched by Lieutenant Colonel Moulton, pumped solid shot into the concrete wall and finally broke it down. The Sherman led them into the strong point, firing HE shells. 48 Royal Marine Commando had attained its first objective of D-Day. The junction between 41 RMC and 48 RMC never happened here at the Petit Enfer. So it was late on the evening of the 7th that the junction between 46 RMC and 41 RMC happened at the Petit Enfer. They landed on Juno Beach on the 7th. They also took the strong point at Luxeur-Mer, WN-25. All that's left of the WN-25 is this machine gun Tobruk. There had been many commando raids and reconnaissance visits along the coast before D-Day. One was here at Luxeur-Mer on the 28th of September 1941. They were supposed to go to Courseul. They went off course and ended up here. Two men were killed in the raid and they're buried in the local cemetery.